before the video starts, I just want to say thanks to Pipo the Penguin or Samo Samo, I see he has two names, for my first donation ever. Thanks so much, I really appreciate the support, you are an actual legend, thank you so much. Kulervo has one of the strongest ability kits in the entire game. He is almost in the same league as Zaku, Revenant or Saren, but he sadly comes with one major downside, and that's no shields. We will get more into why this is quite bad when we get to his abilities, but regardless, if you are just playing the game in the steel path or anything normal, he is actually insanely strong. The only place that he falls off quite hard is endurance, so for most people this is actually no problem. If you don't ever go deep into endurance then this warframe is one of the strongest in the game and i have five builds today two with helminth one without one mid-range build and one for beginners but let's start with the abilities and understand this powerhouse completely friends i hope you are doing well and if you like this video and you want to see more please don't forget to like and subscribe thank you so much so, for his passive, it's insanely good for melee. It gives him 75% heavy attack efficiency and 100% heavy attack wind-up speed. Really good. So, it covers you even if you miss your Tenokai. In addition to that, his abilities grant him combo counter. Recompense, his second ability grants him one combo per dagger hitting an enemy. Melee hits that hit enemies other than your target that are linked by collective curse. His third ability also build one combo point per hit. And finally, Storm of Marco gives you one combo per tick of damage on enemies. This combo you gain scales with mods like Quickening or Naramon's combo count chance increase, so anything like that will buff this up. Like I said, it's insane for melee. Another part of his passive is he gains increased health, armor and energy per rank, capping at 30 obviously because that's the max that a Warframe can go, and it caps it at 200% extra health, 50% energy and 100% extra armor. I mean, can a passive get any more inflated? It's very good. His first ability, Wrathful Advance, has two modes of casting. Quick tap to teleport to an enemy and heavy attack them, and then your critical chance will be increased by a flat 200% at base strength, which is moddable by strength, meaning at 200% strength you will have 400% flat critical chance. Now you need to understand this is a flat value, meaning it is just raw put onto the weapon, meaning if your weapon has 50% critical chance, it will at base strength for Calervo have 250% critical chance. So this means at 150% strength you will have red crits on any melee weapon in the game. The other mode of this ability is the hold functionality which is just a teleport to the location that your mouse is pointed to and if it happens to be an enemy the same effect will happen where you will heavy attack the enemy. So if you just cast it on the floor or somewhere on a ledge you will just teleport to that and still get the flat critical increase and this will also mean that you do not waste any of your combo counter. I really do recommend that you go into your controls and invert Kulervo's casting abilities so that you can just tap to teleport, it's much much easier. And it feels like you have more control that way as well. But regardless of what you choose, for the duration that this ability is active and the amount of flat crit that you get and the freedom of being able to just teleport around the map with ease makes this an incredibly good ability. I don't know if they ever meant to make the crit flat crit chance or additive, but they made it flat so it's insane. Insane. Wrathful Advance is also Calero's Helminth ability, but when Helminth onto another frame only offers 50% of the power that it does to Calero, meaning at 200% you will get 200% flat critical chance, which is still you know, insane. Now for his next ability, Recompense, Kulervo spins 10 daggers around him that orbit him for 5 seconds, and he becomes invulnerable for 1 second when casting this ability. During this time, if you're close to enemies, these daggers will home in on and strike 10 enemies dealing average damage and healing Kulervo's health, and if he is at full health, it will instead give him Overguard. The Overguard is capped, but the cap can raise based on strength along with the damage of these daggers. This deals a guaranteed bleed prize and staggers the enemies that are hit as well. If you do not manage to find 10 enemies for these orbiting daggers, the remainder will sheath back into Kulevo and damage him for honestly a tiny amount. This amount is completely negligible if you have any overguard whatsoever since the damage is so small. And as mentioned previously, each dagger hitting an enemy will raise Kulevo's combo by 1 and can be boosted by combo chance increases. His next ability, Collective Curse, is a cone-shaped ability wave that will stagger enemies 
enemies hit and shackle them to one another. Damage that Kaleva deals to any shackled enemy or enemies will be spread across all linked enemies and will start at 50% damage spread to all shackled enemies. This can be increased by modding strength and it caps out at 100% damage spread. You achieve this by modding 200% strength on Kalevo. Now what makes this interesting is this damage is actually true damage which means no strengths nor weaknesses just solid damage and most importantly it ignores armor but also sadly means it won't spread if you hit an overguarded enemy. So avoid hitting Eximus if you want to kill the crowd. This ability basically makes any single target weapons AoE and AoE weapons and abilities are just insane when using this ability. For example if two enemies are hit for a thousand damage each all of the linked enemies will receive 2000 true damage. If used correctly this is truly a devastating ability. Moving on to his fourth ability Storm of Akko. This will invoke a storm of daggers in the radius around the casting location. This area will inflict slash damage and bleed procs per second for its duration every second and can be strengthened by modding strength and the radius by modding range and duration obviously by modding duration. You can only have one of these storms active at any one time and enemies will be staggered when hit. As mentioned previously this will increase your combo by one per enemy hit then also with every enemy hit again by collective curse as well and this increase again is affected by mods, arcanes or naramon like before. This ability goes without saying is really strong on enemies affected by collective curse since every enemy hit inside the circle will spread to every enemy shackled which really raises the damage by a ton. And that's it for the abilities. He has no augments yet, but regardless, every single one of his abilities are incredibly strong. The only single thing holding him back is the fact that he has no shield. He does get overguard, which does come with the overguard gate of 0.5 seconds, which is insanely low, even when compared to catalyzing shields with its 1.33 second shield gate. This makes him very hard to play at super high levels, which I know is a very niche thing, I guess, to complain about, but then I see something like Rhino or even Cyanax, which gets Overguard Gate and Shield Gate. I'm not really sure why this decision was made to not give him shields, but it's a flaw and it might be the only one he has. But it's worth mentioning, other than that, he's an easy S tier Warframe for any content besides level cap. Now let's move on to the builds. I have five for you, one focused on range, the other focused on heavy melee, then an optimal no helmet build, a mid range build, and then to wrap it up a beginner's build. So first is the nourish melee build. This makes sense because nourish affects the damage of your weapons. So this is a big buff over and above the buffs you already get. I have precision intensify in here to boost the damage increase to 290%. The rest of the build is to make the 200% strength threshold for collective curse to spread 100% of the damage and at 200% strength you get 400% flat crit chance added to your melee which is honestly overdoing it way into tier 4 red crits domain and it will make your overguard cap 20,000 which is more than enough. Energy Nexus synergizes obviously very well with Nourish's energy multiplier as well and a Mars Hatred for some extra armor and more importantly to meet the strength requirement. A change you could make here is to replace a Mars Hatred with Constitution or Streamline and Cunning Drift with Power Drift to still meet the requirement of strength but I find the extra range on Collective Curse and recompense to be very useful but obviously use what works best for you. The arcanes I take is strike and fury to further boost my melee weapons additive damage and attack speed. Also here is the prisma oma build I used for this. For the second build we have the raw build at max range this is a storm of Akko DPS build. With Malt Augmented built up fully this build will give you 234% strength which is enough for collective curse and will make your overguard cap 23,000. I do run Xenoric with Wellspring on this along with Energy Siphon and Energy Nexus to even out the negative efficiency and spam cast nature of this build along with Arcane Steadfast one of the best arcanes for spammy builds energy wise. This build will dominate every battlefield very easily and has enough strength and damage to just keep the area clean at all times and if any enemies get too close 
cast Collective Curse to instantly vaporize them. It's also how you clean the area instantly as well. Cast Storm, then immediately cast Collective Curse on all enemies in the radius and watch them absolutely blow up. Now for the third build, the non helmet Optimal build. This has max range, barring Cunning Drift, which gets swapped for Power Drift to meet the strength requirement for Collective Curse, along with a fully built up Molt Augmented of course. I have Arcane Strike on here to help maximize the attack speed to go along with the infinite combo red crit monster this build is. I've again used Precision Intensify, this time to maximize on the damage from Storm while you wreak havoc in Wrathful Advance. Probably one of the most solid builds that Calerva has to offer. A change you could make if you don't want negative efficiency is swapping Blind Rage with Transient Fortitude and Precision Intensify with Regular Intensify. This will still get you to the 200% strength needed for Collective Curse after Malt Augmented is built up and also goes without saying that if you have umbral intensify maxed you would use that instead of regular intensify now for the mid-range build here it is you won't be getting 200 strength for collective curse but it's still solid and can easily do steel path and if you have reached steel path there should be no reason not to have adaptation yet just go spam some arbitrations and get that and rolling guard two of the best defensive mods in the game it really is worth your time to get it as soon as you can other than that, the build just gives you a bit of everything to make the experience well-rounded and give you a solid baseline to work from. And now, finally, for the new guy, here is the build. Important note here is that Kulevo comes with two Madurai polarities, that's the V1, so continuity and intensify are givens. He also comes with a Naramon polarity in the aura, so corrosive projection for more damage via enemies having less armor, or energy siphon if you find yourself running out of energy often. This paired with Xenoric Wellspring will sort that out completely. I would recommend if you don't mind spending an Aura Former, Steel Charge would be the way to go here, but not the biggest thing to be honest. Very basic, but bear in mind that there are some changes you can make to suit your playstyle. If you're finding that it's hard to survive, you can remove Flow, Stretch and Streamline and replace them with Vitality and Steel Fiber, which will serve you well. And that's it. Lastly, here is the normal Keras build I used as well for reference. And Look, basic builds can also get red crits with Kulevo on a basic build quite easily. This Warframe is legitimately one of the strongest in the game. And the only thing holding him back from going further is the lack of shield sadly. But if you play the game like a normal person, this should not be an issue at all ever. But also if he had a shield, he would probably be the strongest Warframe in the game. Just saying. Anyway. That's about it. Stay safe out there and see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Much love.